on unity in diversity is the highest possible attainment of a civilization a testimony to the most noble possibilities of the human race and for the very same reason we have come together to celebrate and praise communal harmony and world peace a symposium organized by the vinayaka missions research foundation arupade vidya institute of technology school of arts and science and national foundation for communal harmony new delhi and we are all very glad to welcome you all on this diversified platform to mark the beginning of this wonderful event let's all rise up for the invocation song tamil thai vaalthu சரி <laughs> 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 light symbolizes brightness and prosperity it removes the forces of darkness and gives us positivity in spiritual word light means life with this noble thought we shall all witness the virtual lighting of the ceremonial lamp So true leadership is to be strong kind and bold now it's time to welcome dr r r shanmugavalli director school of arts and science who possesses all the three qualities to welcome the gathering by the grace of almighty with the able guidance of our institute management <laughs> let me take a proud privilege to welcome the dignitaries and students connected together to celebrate international world peace day 2021 each year the international day of peace is observed around the world on 21st september the un general assembly has declared this as a day devoted to strength the idols of peace through observing the non violence in 2021 as we all heal from covid-19 pandemic we inspired to think 
creatively and collectively about how to help everyone to recover better, how to build resilience, and how to transform our world into one that is more equal and more just equitable, inclusive, sustainable, and healthier. In 2021, theme for the International Day of Peace is recovering better for an equitable and sustainable world. I'm extremely honored and feel privileged. Welcome all the a gathering here. My first welcome to our gentle philanthropist, Chancellor Dr. A.S. Ganeshan. Welcome you, sir. Excellence is not being the best, but it is doing your best. I welcome our best to do uh, Dr. Anuradha Ganeshan, the director of our university. Welcome you, ma'am. I welcome our uh, able administrator through Suresh Amwell. Welcome you, sir. A very warm welcome to energetic, dynamic personality, Dr. Gri Irangaswamy. Welcome you, ma'am. We are from different religions. We have different cultures. We speak different languages. But let's stay united and conserve the integrity of our nation. With this note, let me welcome Dr. Rajal Bordin Jain, the Board of Study member in Jainology of University of Madras, representing Jainism. Welcome you, ma'am. I'm pleased to welcome through P.K. Abdul Rahman, an Assistant Professor HOD of JBAS, Center for Islamic uh, Studies, University of Madras, representing Islamism. Welcome you, sir. Warm welcome to Thiru Kalyana Murthy Sridhar, straight treasurer, Vigan Bharati, representing Hinduism. Welcome you, sir. Happy to welcome Indigenous Worship Coordinator, Reverend Theophilus, Master of Theology in Christianity. Welcome you, sir, representing Christianity. Uh, heartiest welcome to Thiru Jaswinder Singh, an uh, IT engineer, by profession is an influential uh, Sikh educator and speaker representing Sikhism. Welcome you, sir. Warm welcome to Thiru uh, Vijay Sattva, public speaker from South India, Buddha Vihar, representing Buddhism. Welcome you, sir. Communal harmony and world peace is being celebrated every year in our campus in order to maintain in order to promote integration and harmony in midst of our students. The idea behind is to eschew violence and to promote goodwill among the students who are the future and present society of our nation. I welcome principal of AVAT, Dr. Selva Kumar, Director of Professor Uma Chakravarti of Architecture, uh, Deputy Director and Dean of Management Studies, Professor Balaganapati, Principal of AVAL, Dr. Sridhar, Vice Principal, Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Vijendra Babu, Professor Prabhu, and uh, uh, Registered Administration, Professor Kartikeyan, Campus in charge through Syed Magamad, AV Campus. Institute members, Dr. Devika members, and beloved students, children, I welcome you all. This uh, event is uh, every year, it has been celebrated in our campus to maintain peace and harmony, this culture to be inculcated in the minds of our students. With this note, I welcome all of you to maintain healthier society, peaceful society of our nation. I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The empowered woman is powerful beyond measure and beautiful beyond description and empowers other women too. Now it's time to welcome such an empowered, benevolent and serene personality whose very name when uttered brings a smile on many faces, who is none other than our very own Honorable Madam Chancellor, Dr. Anuradha Ganesan, to deliver the presidential address. Respected dignitaries of today's program, heads of institution, members of the National Foundation for Communal Harmony, faculty, staff, and dear students. A special welcome to our guest speakers, 
who have taken so much efforts to be with us today in today's uh, symposium of communal harmony and world peace. Dr. Rajal Barundia Jain, who is representing Jainism, Mr. P.K. Abdul Rahman, who is to represent Islamism, Mr. Kalyamurti Sridhar for Hinduism, Reverend Theophilus for Christianity, Mr. Jaswinder Singh for Sikhism, Mr. Vijayat, Vijay Sattva for Buddhism, and Dr. Giri Rangasamy and uh, the Department of Biotechnology, Dr. Devi Kal, who have taken this initiative to uh, conduct this program year after year, the principal of AVIT, uh, principal of uh, Director of Arts and Science, vice principals, uh, good morning to all of you. It is indeed a great pleasure to be here today and participate in this very important program, which is truly an exercise to reaffirm our faith, the unity, the unity and diversity of a great nation. Here in our college, we strive to develop students who are academically brilliant, spiritually inspired, morally upright, and socially conscious. So why are we conducting this program along with the National Foundation for Communal Harmony? Because it is essential for every individual to understand the importance of communal harmony and contribute towards maintaining the same. We want to establish unity, unity in diversity because communal harmony is paramount in any country that has multiple religions and communities. We must strive hard to train and educate people in harmonious cohabitation. India is one of the biggest countries that stand for unity. The constitution of our country has enforced laws to ensure communal harmony and, and the government is taking all precautions and measures to ensure the same. The atmosphere in which we grow determines our thinking. Communal politics and religious fanaticism have fanned communal thinking and should not be allowed to dominate. Hence, it is very important that we should all always consciously think and practice communal harmony. The father of a nation, Mahatma Gandhiji, paved the way for communal harmony and was a firm believer of it. He began his meetings with a all faith prayer, reciting portions from various religious texts from his, childhood, from his childhood. He got an opportunity to listen to his father's friends belonging to different religions, including Islam, Zoroastrianism, and he knew a lot about their faith. In, when he was in England, when a Christian who was a teetotaler and vegetarian encouraged him to read the Bible, he was enthralled and particularly liked the idea that if somebody slaps you on the right cheek, offer your left cheek. The essential learnings he imbibed from these uh, religious texts was the importance of principle and truth. Thus, from his childhood, truth was a highly held value which became the basis for living his life and various actions that ensured. Gandhiji rightly said, the whole geographic, geographical India is one country. The whole people make one nation. Let us unite all races and religious communities together. We believe in one world family spiritual unity and unitism. India is a country of multi-religions. India's diversity, linguistic, religious, ethnic, cultural, etc., is incomparably more than in any country in the world. Officially, it has been recorded that there are 1,618 languages in India, 6,400 castes, six major religions, etc. None could have put this broad vision of India than the great son of India, Swami Vivekananda, 
who addressed the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, USA, on September 11, 1893, addressing his audience as Sisters and Brothers of America. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but accept all religions as true. I'm proud to tell you that I belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations. Such is the greatness of our country. Kanye and Pungundranar is an influential Tamil philosopher from the Sangam age, which is about 3000 years ago. He composed two poems in Purana Nure and Natride. His famous Tamil quote, Yadamure Yavaram Kelir, is at present depicted in the United Nations organization. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was the first one to quote this famous a quote in, the, in his European Union historical speech. It means, I am a world citizen and every citizen is my kid and kid. Dr. Abdul Kalam also remarked in his speech that when there is rightnessness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. When there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in the home. When there is harmony in the home, there is order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world. The great poet Thiruvalluvar in chapter 32, in chapter 33, Kural number seven, and chapter 32, Kural number four, says, Tanuir nipinum seyarka tan piridu inuir nikuminai. Refrain from taking precious life from any living being even to save your own life. Inna seidare orutal, avar nana nanayam seidividal. The proper punishment of those who have done evil to you is to put them to shame by showing great kindness to them. Here the Turkral never encourages even a thought of violence and instead goes for love and kindness even at the risk of losing one's life. Because if one responds violence with violence, then it becomes a vicious circle. Hence, violence cannot be stopped by violence. It is very clear that the path to peace is to engage with each other free from hatred and violence and be full of love and kindness. That body which is inspired with love contains a living soul. If void of love, the body is just skin and bones. Religions are not for separating men from one another, but they're meant to bind them. Rabindranath Tagore says, the highest education is that which does not merely gives us information, but makes our life in harmony with all existence. Here at VMRF, different festivals, be it Holi, Diwali, Eid or Christmas, are celebrated with equal zeal and enthusiasm. Our faculty, staff and students come from different castes, backgrounds and religions and work in perfect harmony with each other. We all understand that a community divided is a nation divided. A community united is a nation enlightened. Thank you for the opportunity to interact with all of you today, which is also the International Day of Peace. The United Nations 2021 theme for the International Day of Peace is recovering better for an equitable and sustainable world. Dr. Shanmugawali had also mentioned about this. So it is to celebrate peace by standing up against acts of hate online and offline and by spreading compassion, kindness and hope in the face of the pandemic and as we recover. Dear students, let us work towards building a better tomorrow 
as ambassadors of peace and harmony to the world. Thank you once again and best wishes. I'm looking forward to hear the symposium. Thank you all and wish you all a good day. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words. The art of true leadership is to be more participative than directive and more enabling than performing. I now request one such personality who always happily engages herself in all the events, our dear ma'am, Dr. Giri Rangasamy, Dean CSR, to felicitate the gathering. Good morning to everyone. I feel very happy to be a part of this annual program initiated by the National Foundation for Communal Harmony, New Delhi. Our uh, Chancellor, Dr. Ganesan, and uh, Director, Dr. Anuradha Ganesan, are always very keen on developing the total personality of the students who come to study here, so that when they leave the portals of Arupare Vidu Institute of Technology, they should carry with them at least a few important values to prove that they are the fittest citizens of uh, our country, trained by the institution. This symposium on communal harmony and world peace is one of the programs which makes the students realize what is communal harmony and why it is important to us. Dr. Anuradha also mentioned about uh, Swami Vivekananda. I would like to read what she has already said. That uh, in a meeting, he says, he calls the audience, my brothers and sisters. The same way he has proclaimed that uh, the different religions are like different streams of water, but all of them finally lead to a common ocean. And he also adds that if only our people have developed a deeper understanding of the individual religions, they will, they will come to realize that all religions speak of love and eternal bliss, but prohibiting, harming all, any creature. Communal harmony is a, param is a paramount component for the social and cultural development of any country. Like uh, Swami Vivekananda's vision, we also should try to understand his vision, which will bring people and nation together. We can all share various kinds of interests and accept different opinions of different people without fighting. Communal harmony means that people of different religions, castes, creeds, sex, and different backgrounds live together in the society with love and peace amongst them. And harmony strives to create goodwill and harmony among different communities. People celebrate festivals of different religions in our country together, organizing exhibitions, highlighting unity in diversity in the country. And they also organize film, films and screen films, which depict our country's rich, diverse culture and also appreciation of this diversity. Harmony helps to deal with changes as it is a concept that ties people and nations together. September 21st, that is today, uh, is uh, all over the world, it is uh, now considered as the International World Peace Day. The United Nations General Assembly has described this as a day devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace through observing 24 hours of nonviolence. And uh, every year, the uh, Communal Harmony Day, September 21st, will have a fixed theme. And as uh, Dr. Shanmugali and Madam have already mentioned, Anyway, I'm again reminding you of that. It is recovering better for a sustainable and equitable world. And uh, maybe we should celebrate peace by standing up against hate amidst, even amidst COVID-19 calamity. 
What is peace? Peace is a state of mind. It is a virtue. It is a disposition for benevolence, justice, and confidence. And it's a concept of societal friendship and the absence of hostility and violence. It's a social sense. And this is commonly used to mean a lack of conflict and freedom from fear of violence between individuals or groups of individuals. Unfortunately, in our society, common divisions are deepening more and more. The fact that the real issues in our society are poverty, uh, unemployment, suicides of farmers, political, social, and cultural problems. But these are all totally ignored, while caste and religions are considered important. And we all, always observe this situation during the election time. The un, this unwanted trend may lead to serious social and political problems. We see a lot of disruptive forces spoiling communal harm, harmony, leading to heavy destructions. But today we are focusing on what is called peace. Now on the screen, you can see the symbol of peace, a dove carrying a small twig. And uh, it is considered to be, peace is considered to be a golden ticket to enter a new and brighter future for mankind. It is a cornerstone of every nation's development as it comes along with unity, positive thinking, and collaboration for the common good of all. The citizen should decide on a set of united values that they will live by. And also this, they nurture these values for the next generation. We are all very important in taking this epic endeavor and the future generations need to receive from us a more equal, peaceful and a beautiful world. We find that fights and violence among men are generally due to the anger or wrath. People become very angry as soon as their opinions differ, and immediately they plunge into violence, which we have experienced several times among our own society. So now uh, we have created a little bit of awareness to those who are listening to us, the importance of peace and harmony. Of course, my speech will be incomplete if I do not mention Tiruvalluvar. And all of you know that Tirukural is called Podu Marai. That means it is a common religion. So anyone can take that book and then you can get values out of it. And uh, I thought it will be appropriate if I quote Nagayum Uvagayum Kollum Sinatin Pagayum Ulavopira. Nagai is a laughter, a smile, and Uvagai is a happiness. So Nagayim, e, Nagayim, Uvagayim, Kollum, Sinatin, Pagayim, Ulavo, Pira. That means, is there a greater enemy than anger, which kills the two important things, that one is smile or laughter, which indicates happiness, and also the joy of heart. So all of us understand that if we control our anger and then not spurting out on the moment, we will be ending up with happiness and will enjoy the peace in our hearts. My job is to give felicitation to the speakers, resource persons. Anyway, already uh, Dr. Shanmuhuli has welcomed all of them and Madam also has added a few words. So I also extend again warm welcome to the speakers of different religions. And uh, you have graced our occasion because um, this program, I'm sure no other university is taking uh, care of accepting us 
and uh, i can tell you that this is one of the programs which all our students enjoy because in our college we have all religions but we never show any difference so we all live together under the same roof as brothers and sisters and uh, i am very happy that today we could materialize uh, this program and with the theme communal harmony and world peace i would like to thank uh, the secretary of uh, national foundation for communal harmony new delhi who has been encouraging us through every year and in fact though there is lockdown he called us to say that we can continue it online and uh, i would like to thank uh, dr anuradha also who always supports us so far she has never said no for any program and I, and and i know this is one of her pet programs and so she made it a point to be with us and uh, i i would like to thank dr devika who coordinated beautifully this program i know how many phone calls i would have made to her she would have got sick by now but uh, we have the sense of achievement that our students have also logged in and i am sure this is a sort of a value education every year we are giving to our students initiated by new delhi foundation thank you thank you ma'am effective leaders lead by example with honesty confidence and compassion now it's time to welcome our beloved principal of avit dr g selva kumar an effective leader to felicitate the gathering thank you honorable madam chancellor respected guest speakers beloved officials of our very group of institutions fellow colleagues dear students and guests very good morning to you all avit is organizing a unique program today a symposium on communal harmony and world peace to mark the international peace day i thank our honorable madam chancellor for giving permission for organizing this program i congratulate the organizers for their untiring efforts india is a great example of unity in diversity and it is multicultural multi ethnic and multilingual country the preamble of our constitution states india is a secular country it gives its citizens the freedom to practice any religion of their own choice people belonging to different culture and religions shares common platform to understand each other's cultural and religious beliefs which in turn fosters the feeling of mutual trust and harmony the threat to the communal harmony is always preferred over other threats as british used this as a tool to enslave india in 19th century subsequently our independence was achieved after achieving communal harmony so the need of the hour is harmony and peace through which we can attain socio economic development my dear friends avit is a little india we have students representing different states religions ethnicity and languages on this international peace day i assure that our students will maintain communal harmony and be the responsible citizens of india and work for uplifting the name and fame of our country in the international arena and i really uh, thank the organizers for giving the opportunity and best wishes for this program thank you thank you sir now i call upon dr r devika professor and head of biotechnology and the convener of this event who is known among us for her kind and empathetic attitude to brief about the program thank you ma'am ma i am happy to inform you that our college every year celebrates the communal harmony program with fresh enthusiasm and good cheers the national foundation of communal harmony new delhi intends to celebrate this program by the colleges across the country by but we meticulously our honorable chancellor and madam chancellor would like us to un undertake this program every year in our college we invite the celebratories of different religion who will impart the concept of the harmony and create awareness among the students which will definitely promote harmony and unite students from coming from different parts of our country our management insists all, along with the subject knowledge create awareness on all the concepts which will add to the total personality of each student and add values for their life this year we chosen september 21st as it happens to be world peace day and that explains the theme of our communal harmony and world peace 
today we have six celebrities from the six different religions to share their views about harmony i welcome all the uh, guest speakers thank you all thank you ma'am the acronym of diversity is different individuals value each other regardless of skin intellect talents or years now it's time to hear the thoughts of dr rajal berendia jain on peace and harmony we welcome you ma'am thank you ma'am uh is my screen visible ma'am yes ma'am yes respected dignitaries in the session all the faculties students and audience a very good morning to one and all present here first of all i would like to thank the organizers of the event who have a five war vision in creating and in shaping the future of their students i thank the organizers vinayaka mission research foundation avit institute of technology school of arts and science and national foundation for communal harmony new delhi for organizing the symposium and giving a better a bigger vision to the students and the college members so before i start it's i'm going to present on communal harmony and jainism what jainism has to share with all of us so what is religion i think uh, dr anuradha ma'am and dr giri madam has already explained about religion harmony and peace so i'm not going to go further into it what is religion in simple words what is religion religion is something which brings people closer to each other when i tell religion brings people closer to each other it doesn't mean people of those religion only if i follow a religion i should be humane and i should be able to sustain myself with whom so ever i am surrounded and religion other simple words it is something which makes the world a better place to live in so no religion can create you know like disharmony all religions are here to create harmony and peace what is jain what has jainism to tell about uh, harmony and peace before that what are the core principles of jainism there are three a's ahimsa anekant non absolutism and ahimsa is non violence violence doesn't mean only killing violence means mental violence physical violence also many times when it comes to violence we only talk about physical violence but even mental violence in today's time mental violence play a major role and mental non violence can only give solutions to so many problems i think uh, in the past one and a half year covid has taught us so many things and most of us have undergone through mental violence no peace of mind ahimsa gives solutions to that anekant as giri madam mentioned you know when opinions differ there comes clashes but to anekant is a solution where there are differences in the opinions it it gives solutions to all the problems where there are minds with different thinkings it respects the views of others and aparigraha is non possession anuradha ma'am mentioned about mahatma gandhi ji how he was inspired with uh, so many religious people i would like to add that shrimad raj chandra a jain philosopher a mystic poet he changed gandhi ji's life as you could see here what gandhi ji had to say about shrimad raj chandra such was the man who captivated my hearts in religious matters as no other matter man has till now when uh, when gandhi ji was in england and when he uh, was in a thought of changing you know his religious at that time shrimad ji said like first you study your religion shrimad ji was a jain shrimad ji gandhi ji was not jain but then i mean he told gandhi ji 
that first you study your religion understand your religion and then you take a call what you have to do so he didn't tell like you know blindly follow any any religion neither he said follow my religion but he first told gandhi ji to religion which you belong you understand what where you are standing and what your religion is trying to teach you next what contribution of jainism towards harmony and peace we all here we all are here to discuss you know what different religions can give in creating harmony and peace globally so i would like to quote a quote of acharya amit gati who says satveshu maitram gunishu pramodam klishteshu jeeveshu kripa paratvam madhyastha bhavam viparitta vritto sada mamatma vidhatu devo i mean in this in this four lines they are explaining four bhavanas the four bhavanas are the four thoughts thoughts because whatever we do first everything comes in our mind then it comes into our words and then it comes into our action whenever we plan something it something comes to our mind first so our thought process how our thought process is that matters a lot because our thoughts decide what we are going to speak and how we are going to act so more than action jain religion has put a heavier emphasis on a thought process because it is closely linked to how we act it says higher the quality of thoughts better the behavior and lower the quality worse the behavior so our behavior is decided by our how do we create our thoughts so in the quote there were four bhavanas maitri bhavana pramod bhavana karunya bhavana and madhyastha bhavana bhavana is your thought how do you contemplate how do you think so first one is maitri bhavana maitri means friendliness a loving kindness while bhavana means virtue or quality of our thoughts so maitri bhavana is the practice of expanding love kindness without limits or unlimited friendliness you know this maitri bhavana can be categorized in three ways friendship with yourself i would like everybody to tell friendship with myself friendship with my own self first if i can be friendly with me then i can be friendly with others so first category it is friendship with ourselves friendship with all human beings and third friendship with all living beings it, we are not only confining ourselves with only human beings all other living beings all other living creatures who are surrounded by us or with whom we are surrounded they may be animals they may be plants whoever they are we need to have friendship with them next we have pramod bhavana what is pramod pramod means joyfully gratefully appreciate value respect cherish treasure admire have regard for esteem for the virtues of others you know virtues of others if we want to really grow we need to admire the good qualities of others so that we can invite those qualities in ourselves these feelings hans the force of love the power of everything good in life pramod bhavana guides us to recognize virtues in others to occupy our minds with appreciation and awareness of virtues in others you know appreciation and awareness of virtues first of all when we appreciate others we are trying to get those virtues in ourselves so pramod bhavana motivates us to appreciate all good qualities which we see in others so that we could follow the same thing in fact the jain prayers are not to a person but are an adoration of the virtues i would like to just give you know like our prayer goes this way नमो अरिहंतानम नमो सिद्धानम नमो आयरियानम नमो उपच्छायनम नमो लोय सवसाम आई गेस यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द वर्ड नमो नमो मींस आई डू माय नमन आई पे माय ओबेसेंस सो आई पे माय ओबेसेंस टू द अरिहंतास टू सिद्धास टू आचार्यास टू उपाध्यायस एंड टू साधुस आई थिंक आचार्य उपाध्याय एंड साधु आर द टर्म्स व्हिच एवरीबॉडी कैन अंडरस्टैंड अरिहंत एंड सिद्ध आर लिटिल बिट टेक्निकल but when we tell namo arihantanam i bow down to all the arihantas regardless who they are i mean not an individual arihant an individual person so we pray to the post we pray to the qualities 
of the Aryantas, of the Siddhas, of the Acharyas. When I tell Namo Ayariyanam, I bow down to all the Acharyas. When I, tell, when I tell Namo Uvachayanam, I bow down to all the Padhyayas. And when I tell Namo Loe Sabva Sahunam, I bow down to all the Sadhus in this universe. So when I bow down, I respect their virtues and I try to imbibe their virtues. This is what we learn from Pramod Bhavana. Next, Karunya Bhavana. I think the term Karuna, it's very well, uh, most of you all may be heard, Karuna is like compassion. Karunya Bhavana is having sympathy towards others and attempting to elevate their pain. When we see somebody in pain, we try to bring them out of their pain. This is compassion, not just towards your loved ones, but all living beings. You know, we saw in the previous slide when we saw the uh, Maitri Bhavana, friendship with ourselves, friendship with human beings and friendship with all living beings. Similarly, Karuna applies everywhere. It's just not with the whom, with whom we are surrounded or with a bigger circle of us. It is towards all living creatures in the universe. We have compassion towards them. And this is where the principle of nonviolence stands. Compassion is a spiritual quality. It is love in action. Lord Mahavira said that true compassion is summation of sympathy, emotional feeling for their pain and or suffering, the desire to help the less advantaged people and help them in any way that can be. You know, like to help everybody, but for helping everybody, we need to have compassion within us. And that can create, that can help in creating harmony and peace. Next, we have Madhyastha Bhavana. Madhyam, Madhyastha. What does Madhyastha mean? Equanimity. We are equal towards everything. We are equal towards pain and suffering. We are equal towards our enemies and our friends. We are equal towards being neutral everywhere in our life. So Madhyastha Bhavana is one of the four and the most sublime Bhavanas in the Jainism. What we saw, the four Bhavanas, it is the foundation for wisdom and freedom and the protector of friendship and Karuna. Maitri and Karuna, the two bhavanas which we saw, it is the foundation for those. You know, without being Madhyastha, we cannot have friendship, we cannot have Karuna, and we cannot have Pramod also. So Madhya in the word Madhyastha means to stand in the middle. This standing in the middle refers to a balance that comes from inner stability. When we learn to stabilize ourselves, you know, at no point in our life, we can go anywhere wrong. We can take any wrong decisions. We cannot be partial to anybody when we are stable. You know, and that stability comes from inner stability and remaining centered when surrounded by turmoil. So, so you know, this period of COVID has taught us so many things. We have been under turmoil. We have been under the worst situation. You know, like people have lost their family members, their dear and near ones, their close ones, their far ones. We have lost so many. But if we are not having Madhyastha Bhavana, we cannot survive in this world, actually. So when we are neutral, we accept the situations as they come to us. We do not create disharmony. You know, we are in harmony with ourselves. We create harmony for others. What other sages have told regarding, you know, uh, thoughts, because I spoke about, I get, there are so many other things, but the time given was like 10 minutes. So I just took a topic on thought, bhavana. I just, I just felt I could share this with all of you. So what others are telling about thought, William James, father of American philosophy, says that a man is what he thinks about all day long. So what we think we become, how we think we become the same. And what Ika Tolle, I think most of we all would have read his book, The Power of Now, you know, the, uh, the bestseller book, Power of Now, states what? He says that on a typical day, human mind encounters more than 60,000 thoughts. So what kinds of thoughts are we attracting every moment? What kinds of thoughts are we attracting every day? And what kinds of thoughts are we, you know, uh, bringing into our life? That will decide what we are and what Dr. Wayne Dale had created. He says like, you know, he had created a program titled Change Your Thoughts. So everybody lays important on thoughts. So I was here to just to tell a very small, you know, uh, thing about Bhavana, what Jainism has to give for the world peace. So how do we create harmony? 
how do we create we are you have celebrating the world peace day right so directly we cannot jump to the world so harmony of individuals when we have self harmony you know maitri towards ourselves friendship towards ourselves when we are kind enough to ourselves harmony of individuals will lead to the societal harmony you know everything is chained so when we are harmonious with our own selves then we can create that harmony we can spread that harmony to a societal level and when the society societal harmony will lead to the world peace when there is harmony in the society collectively we can contribute to the world peace so outer peace can come only when there is inner peace so to begin with we have to start working from our own selves we need to follow you know friendship we need to we need to follow compassion we can follow appreciating the virtues of others so when we are at peace then we can create peace for our family members for our society and for the world at large so i i once again take the opportunity to thank you the organizers for giving me this opportunity for sharing what i have learned from jainism and that's it thank you all thank you so much ma'am for wonderfully briefing about the co principles of jainism i welcome mr p k abdul rahman to share his thoughts on harmony very good morning uh, everyone uh it is my pleasure and honor to be part of this uh, initiative by the vinayaka missions research foundation and its institute uh, avit and uh, the national foundation for communal harmony new delhi and i appreciate uh, this initiative uh, because uh, we live in a world where there is increasing conflict in the name of religions and cultures affecting the very peaceful coexistence of humanity in the world at large the increasing conflict in the name of religion is in our own backyard as well india which has a great legacy of or a philosophical foundation of vasudeva kudumbakam where we treat this whole world as one family he is marked unfortunately with religious and cultural divisions affecting the very essence of india as a nation india as a civilization and i think that in such a world of conflict that we increase our conversations about the need for recapturing our cultural imaginations our religious imaginations and strive towards contributing to rebuilding our mutual trust confidence and through that process build a world of unity and harmony since i have been asked to speak on you know the islamic perspective on religious harmony and peace which is an important uh uh area for my regular engagement with uh, different audiences let me also confess that you know the time that we have it's very very limited and therefore a very comprehensive idea of an islamic perspective so would be the case with other speakers i assume that you know that could be difficult but at the same time in a very 
you know, a uh, small way, let me give uh, an attempt to uh, make an attempt to, you know, say a few things that I consider are important from an Islamic point of view. Islam, the word Islam that represents a faith tradition, a world religion, is a name of a religion that believes in the submission to the will of God. The very word etymologically means submission to the will of God. And a Muslim is someone who has submitted to the will of God. And when Islam is a religion that calls humans to submit to the will of God, what does that will of God from an Islamic point stand for? We need to look at the context in which Prophet Muhammad preached the message of God that was in the seventh century Arabian society. A society that believed in tribal supremacisms, a kind of clan solidarity, where conflicts of different kinds that pre-existed for a very, very long, long time among communities and tribes. Islam comes with a message of brotherhood. And it called, the Prophet called, the people of Arabia, to the same message that all other prophets that Islam considered have been sent by the God to different societies in the world, starting with Adam, and the chain of prophethood ends with, according to the Islamic point of view, with Prophet Muhammad. And therefore, from an Islamic point of view, Islam is a larger, part of a larger religious continuum. Adam, Abraham, Noah, David, John, Eunice, Moses, Isa, Jesus, all these prophets and messengers of God are important to the Islamic faith. And therefore, according to the foundations of Islamic faith, it is impossible for one to become a Muslim if he or she refuses to believe that all these prophets before Prophet Muhammad are messengers and prophets of God. And therefore, in the foundations of Islamic faith, it is argued that there is a plurality of the prophetic messages that predates the prophet's mission in Arabia. And all of these messages are fundamentally the same uh, uh, core, the religious core that Islam stands for. So I cannot be a Muslim if I refuse to believe in Jesus Christ as the messenger of God. I can't be a Muslim if I refuse to believe that Moses is the messenger of God. And they fundamentally gave the message of the, the, the God Almighty to their people. If you know the, the, the rituals and the, the uh, essence of the Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca, the Hajj, it is essentially a reliving of the experiences of Ibrahim, Abraham, his wife, Hagar, Hajara, and their son, Ismail. And all these rituals in the process of Hajj is a process of reliving of their experiences in the desert of, of Mecca when Ismail was an infant child. So starting with the ritualistic aspects of Islam to the philosophical and theological foundations, you find 
an essential connect to the previous uh, in the, the, the pre-Islamic religious tradition, including Christianity and Judaism. And within Islamic tradition, there has been a very strong philosophical element that argues that in society, other than the Semitic society, including India, the religious traditions that we all believe in could have had an Islamic connect as well. Since Islam, before the, before the emergence of, before the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad, since according to the Islamic perspective, the Islamic worldview has existed from right from the period of Adam. So our classification of the history of religion is one, but in the philosophical sense of it, there is a kind of, you know, reconnecting with the past that Islam insists upon. And therefore, Islam's consideration is that it is part of a larger religious country. And there is a story from the Prophet that uh, he was talking about a beautiful building wherein there is a small gap which is incomplete, which made people wonder, oh, why this you know, beautiful building is you know, left incomplete in a small, small corner. And the prophet said, I am that brick who will fill the gap and make it a beautiful structure. So in that sense, it's not a perspective of conflict and animosity that the prophet puts forth, rather, a perspective of you know, solidarity with the past, a connect with the past. And, and it is through the connect with the past that he uh, reinforced the messages that the earlier prophets had called people, their people uh, uh, in the, in the pre-Islamic tradition. The, the principles of compassion, principles of you know, mercy, kindness, the examples are a plenty. Examples are a plenty from the tradition of the prophet, a society that fought with one another for years together for serious reason that what can imagine. He brings in this idea of brotherhood and establishes peace and tranquility in that community. We know prophet was brutalized. His companions for proclaiming the new faith was brutalized by the local people. And the prophet taught his companions, Sabran, have patience. What the God offers you is, is the heaven. And therefore, have patience and show compassion to your, your enemy. From that point of view, the Prophet is forced to migrate to Madina. The first thing that the Prophet did was to establish a world of mutual existence and coexistence of different faith traditions, including the Sabians, the Jews, and the Christians, and the, the, the non-Islamic Arab communities there. So the Treaty of Medina, the, the Covenant of Medina that the Prophet signed, ensured that every community had the right to follow their religious religion. And it's very important that there was a delegation from Abyssinia, the Christian delegation of, of 60 people who came to meet the Prophet and have a dialogue with him. So they wanted to understand the new society in Medina. And they stayed there for two days. And every time it was their prayer time, the Prophet offered the, the second holiest place in Islamic tradition, the, the mosque of the Prophet, for the Christian community to offer their prayer. And that reminds me, 2019, when you know, there was a you know, major landslide in Kerala, we would have all read the, that in the, in the newspaper. I thought it was a reliving of the you know, experience of the Prophet. When the landslide happened, when the floods happened the year before that, many places of worship, Islamic places of worship, were opened to the local community to take shelter in. One mosque in 2019 was converted into a, 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 you know, uh, a place where autopsy could be conducted of the disease. This principle of mutuality and compassion is something that we find as the essence of Islamic history. One might find different strands within Muslim society as we do, we have it in other societies as well. There are certain deviations that we could find in the name of Islam, but essentially this, you know, extreme radicalized uh, ideas that we get to hear from different parts of the world is in my opinion, is a, a, a reflection of, you know, uh, uh, more than the religious, it is more political, 
you know, uh, uh, expression triggered by the the uh, absence of uh, you know peace within, as my the previous speaker uh, was talking about. So Islam first, as the Prophet did, was trying to build uh, a process where uh, people would undergo a process of inner transformation, and there is a process. Uh, uh, of inner transformation and through that connect to the larger society where this transformation is, is globalized. So this idea rooted in the foundations of a monotheistic idea is to fundamentally uh, to say that you know religions could coexist even when the, there is a, an essential difference in the way they conceive the idea of God. We understand that the, the idea of Tawheed, the oneness of God, is not in contradiction with, in the reality of the coexistence, not in the theological sense of it, but in terms of the practical coexistence of community, is very well uh, reflected in the uh, you know, statement of the 12th century Sufi philosopher and poet Jalaluddin Rumi. He says that, you know, it, the truth is. You know, uh, there is multiple truths. The color of the truth could, you know, vary. It is like a light emanating a hall through different, you know, uh, glass uh, panes. The boss, you have a green glass, you have the green light inside through the same light. You know, the source of the light is same, but then the light that is reflected inside the hall that illuminates the hall is varying in shape because the, the glasses were the, the light is filtered into are of different colors. And he says that the truth transcends the, you know, the, the limitations of speciality. You know, there is a larger understanding of the very idea of truth that is rooted in the foundation of Islamic tradition when, when Rumi talks about it. Quran very clearly says that there is no compulsion in the matter of truth, like Rahabuddin. There is no uh, for you, your religion, and for me, mine, you know, there is no compulsion in the matter of faith. Follow what is more convincing to you. Let me follow what is convincing to me. This idea of coexistence without any coercion and force is something that is fundamental to our peaceful coexistence in the uh, contemporary world. I think with the limitation of time that we have, let me stop there. And uh, I again uh, thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity and taking this initiative that could go a long way in at least, you know, uh, sensitizing the students to think that there is a need for communities to come together. There is a need for people to, you know, uh, live in harmony, irrespective of what faith tradition they follow. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for making to understand the principles of mercy, kindness, and compassion emphasized by the Prophet. I invite Mr. Kalyamurti Sridhar to share his thoughts. Good morning to everybody. It's my great pleasure, and uh, I'm honored by the invitation extended by Vinayaga Mission Group of Institutions to speak on behalf of Hinduism. Uh, uh, may I convey my honorable thanks to Honorable Vice Chancellor uh, Chancellor and uh, Madam Chancellor, and also to all the uh, dignitaries and the office bearers of the institution. It gives me great pleasure to talk about uh, Hinduism. Before that, we should know what is peace and harmony, being a uh, communal peace and harmony. Uh, peace uh, is a state of mind. As a, a speaker before, initially itself, uh, somebody spoke about that, that is, uh, peace is a state of mind. Whereas harmony is the state of living. So peace uh, and harmony changes its uh, the definition of peace and harmony changes over time. What was peace in uh, 12th century or an 8th century or before Christ is not the same today because uh, human beings are increasing in numbers. The community is growing constantly, whereas the resources are uh, being reduced. Uh, uh, resources are not replenishable. Most of the resources are not replenishable. That means they cannot be created again. Hence, uh, uh, because of stiff competition, peace is under threat. Competition for resources added to that, as the uh, standard of living across the world increases, the human ego, the human desire, uh, uh, the human existence itself wants to defend. 
why all these things are happening in this world as we grow as a community together with a large amount of population in a short space of in a short space of geographical geography everyone feels that i am the center of the world everyone starts feeling i am the center of the world and everything is around me so basically a thinking of system and surroundings in chemistry we see we say the system and surroundings system is i am the system the surroundings is for me and whatever i interact with the uh, surroundings affect the surroundings environment per se we always everybody sees only is me but environment per se we should see we and the all other living beings and non living things if we are in peaceful with both the living and non living things then we can coexist with peace forever and how does hinduism perceive this peace to achieve on a holistic scale rather than on an individualistic scale for a particular species alone we are man and mankind man should be kind then only it is called as mankind we should understand that we are social animals so hinduism per se many people think it's only praying gods so as far as hinduism we think we are praying gods but hinduism is only a later development of word for a religion called sanatana dharma so dharma dharma the practice of right conduct dharma is defined as the practice of right conduct so the moment a person starts following karma he is programmed to be a hindu he may have any faith he may be a jain he may be a islam he may be a, a christian any religion he may not have any religion also for example many tribes they don't have any religion so the moment you follow the right conduct the right conduct is the right thing to start the right place to start so the moment you follow the right dharma you become a in uh, you become a sanadana dharmi we will call as a sanadana dharmi that means you started your way of life because the religion is not hinduism is not a religion it is a way of life so it is a collection of wisdom of various sages various uh, writings various scriptures written by highly intelligent people by way of practicing their uh, thing and it is a it is continuously evolving it is one religion which is evolved it is continuously evolving to the needs of the society as the society transforms itself from one avatar to another avatar due to the constant interactions increased interactions with the system and the surroundings so let me put the, the four basic principles of the sanadana dharma dharma your rightful duty karma the laws of manu the reincarnation and moksha if you do the first two things rightfully the right conduct and the end your karma that means do your duty 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 assigned to you by uh, by your virtues by by, by god whatever duty you sh- you do you should do the in a righteous manner so dharma and karma if you do you are uh, reincarnation is uh, uh, the reincarnation of the soul attains mo- uh, is not, is prevented and uh, the, you attain moksha ultimately every religion wants to submit to god and uh, ultimately they want to reach the abode of god so that they exist in peace what is peace peace is peaceful coexistence that is you are in sync with the surroundings that means it should be from inner to outer as as uh, the uh, jainism speaker spoke about the inner peace inner peace is the widely advocated in hinduism or sanadana dharma that one should attain inner peace so how to attain inner peace so that the outer peace can be uh, achieved it's so a simple example if you see if you see avayar she has she used to say in tamil varapoyira neer uyarum neer uyara nellu uyarum varapoy neer uyara nellu uyara mari that cone uyar one like that she used to say that the king will become high only if the uh, uh, lowest bottom of the society becomes high. so it is from inner to outer so if inner peace is practiced first then the outer peace is automatic because the inner peace is in coexistence it is like an operating system our our mind is like an operating system the more you program your mind to be peaceful definitely uh, uh, you can become very peaceful and uh, hinduism advocates sanadana dharma advocates various methodologies to achieve uh, peace we as a human body and a mind together as a, as a soul in the body soul is the tenant of the body as we uh, as we say so to achieve the uh, peace inner peace there are various practices advocated by various saints and uh, Uh, religious uh, uh, in this religious scriptures one of the two things we would advocate in the present scenario in the present environment is uh, to follow inner peace by yoga so yoga is tra- basically training the mind and the body so there are yogas for training the mind so that your desire and ego is getting reduced and you get in sync with yourself first if you are even sync with yourself and understand what you need what is the reason for your existence and definitely uh, the conflicts with the other uh, surroundings can be totally reduced as such you practice yoga mind to become strong so that the body also should become strong you practice a powerful surya namaskar and other exercises prescribed by various sages over time which is available in literature so that you both become uh, sound in sound mind in a sound body so you contribute to the society basically peace to inner peace should become an instinct rather than a habit or character thereby you can achieve uh, social peace and a peace to this world
apart from this basically i would like to talk about uh, shanti before shanti you should understand here hinduism what are the things collection it is a, it is a collection of wisdom and inspiration of various sages uh, in the indian civilization basically it uh, it it has a difference it's it, uh, tolerance hinduism is a religion of tolerance so once if you are uh, uh, sound if you have a sound mind and sound body with inner peace definitely you will start practicing tolerance when you start practicing tolerance and you become ahimsic ahimsic means the ability to re resist for non violence so if you resist violence definitely you become non violence that become more tolerant definitely conflicts in society can be greatly uh, uh, reduced and your way of life becomes very very good then you attain a state of mind like tiruvalluvar says idal isaibada valdal adhuvalladu oodiyam illai uyirke that means you start giving your resources sharing of resources the moment you share your resources uh, definitely uh, uh, the peace is achieved for example in sikhism you have this langar uh, meal so when langa when langa in langar if you see that everybody is the basic thing is food for the basic essential uh, need for any human being is food so if you see that during the period of uh, uh, difficulties the langar kitchens are opened and all uh, all irrespective of all community are fit so likewise peace can coexist with other because the shared principles uh, hinduism is a great religion which attracts shared principles and constantly evolves with time with other religion so that the best in the other religion can be inculcated to be a hindu you need not uh, go to any uh, temple or practice uh, uh, any rituals or anything you can be a hindu hating god also atheists are there in the hinduism it is uh, it is allowed but because it is a way of life if you follow the way of life of right duty and right karma then you are a hindu you need not go to any uh, communal congregation you need not attend any festival you need not do any pujas or anything if you do the right karma and right uh, dharma uh, then you are a real hindu the hindu is a means to attain the mind of shanti shanti means your mind should be calm a calm mind only can uh, think very well a boiling mind can never think very well and contribute to world peace or harmony so hinduism perceive based on the four principles of dharma karma moksha and salvation contributes to the great greatly to the world peace in a larger way today society as a, as a large is uh, threatened by uh, technology there are very technological interventions in the social living these technological interventions uh, challenge the very existence of religion itself in many ways uh, and hinduism teaches us uh, to achieve this practice by these practices of uh, peace non violence abstention from uh, unwanted practices uh, to cleanse our mind and keep ourselves uh, in a pure state of mind so that inner peace contributes to outer peace and peaceful coexistence i thank the organizers for giving me this small opportunity to present before you thank you very much Thank you, sir, for enlightening us all about Ahimsa. I invite Reverend Father Theophilus G to share his views on peace and harmony. Thank you. Um, is my voice clear? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, shalom to you all. Uh, greetings to you all as we celebrate this International uh, World Peace Day. And uh, I greet you all. I'd like to thank the uh, AVIT family. Uh, the Vinayaka Missions Research Foundation and National Institute for Communal Harmony for taking this initiative to have the symposium on communal harmony and world peace. I'd like to congratulate and thank you for doing that. Um, I would also like to thank Sister Sona for introducing me to the AVIT family and the organizers. Um, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank also the other presenters. I think their insights uh, from other religions have been like sowing seeds in our minds thank you for doing that um when i when i heard i wanted to uh, present this um i was reminded of a song and i really wanted to sing that song i guess you all know this ummadama emmadama andavan endha madam nallavanga emmadamo andavan andha madam it was a wonderful song and i really wanted to sing it but then having this time uh, uh, 10 minutes i didn't want to do that but we will go uh, into the presentation that we have um i think it is very right to bring communal harmony um i'm using the word harmony uh, as a better word than the tolerance uh, word that is usually used um i think it is a footstool towards world peace historically if you see communal harmony has been the amalgamating uh, point of value where uh, 
all social, political, um, economic developments and the progress of the country and the community is focused on. So communal harmony needs to be emphasized. And I think today it is a very apt topic that we are going to deal with. So today I'm not, I would like to bring some important insights from the, the Christian biblical perspective. I'm not going to talk on Christianity, but I brought some uh, thoughts that will provoke us to understand where we stand and challenges to know what are the areas that we need to change in our understanding on, on our understanding about communal harmony, especially. I think any religion um, is, a way, is a path to good life, if you all agree to that. And uh, there is this Bishop Desmond Tutu of um, Africa who calls it actually back to the beautiful garden of Eden. I like, really like that word, words when I, when I heard it first. And a life that is connected to God and the living with harmony with everyone as equals. Living with harmony with everyone as equals. Everyone means, I don't say only the humankind, but also even the creation. And uh, that is also considered to be equals in the Garden of Eden. So, the, so today, as we talk about religious harmony, we should remember that religion should be seen as a collective responsibility for the society. It's a collective responsibility. And in the Bible, uh, to be chosen was never a gift, but a responsibility to be a model for other communities. And that is what the religious, uh, religious religions is all about. If you see in the Bible, in the, um, in the Old Testament part, that is the first section, Israel community in the Old Testament of the Bible were used by God as a paradigm and not to be bossy, but to serve others with what God had taught them. That is the liberation God had given them, obedience to God and fellowship and harmony with the others. But when religions claim superiority, it becomes kind of isolated and selfish, which leads to this fundamentalism, hatred and hostility with the others is what I think. So religion in all scriptures, could be only communally, communal, harmonious in nature and nothing else. In the Bible, especially in the New Testament, Jesus had made this so evident in his life. If you read that Jesus in his life was doing a lot of ministries that brought in such communal harmony in his ministries. Jesus was not, Jesus was not a founder of new religion, rather, he was an initiator of a change within his own religious community. We could say that he started a revolutionary movement that worked for the well-being of the people. He made the people understand the real meaning of the Jewish religion and how it needs to be concerned more about the others. Um, if, you, if you have read, uh, uh, in, uh, he says in the book of uh, John's gospel in chapter 10, verses 16, there, um, he says that there are other sheep that belongs to my flock, meaning everyone was his own and he never denied the others. He never confined himself to work only for his own religious people. He even went to heal everyone who came to him, trusted him that, they will, that he would heal them. For him, their trust was most important than their socio-economic, religious, and political identity. And you will also see when you read in the scriptures, Jesus' words, as he says, as I and the Father are one, you should be also one. And he also says, love your neighbors as yourself. All this meant that we need to live in harmony than being separated. Therefore, believing in Jesus for Christians means is to live in harmony. Today, more than the tenets of religion, it is the rituals connected with the religion that disrupts the peace within communities. For Jesus, rituals were made for the betterment of the people and not to divide them as separate people. Especially when you read when we read in the book of Mark, Mark's gospel, chapter 2, verses 27, he said, Sabbath was, not, was, uh, Sabbath was not made for human beings. Uh, sorry, uh, Sabbath was made for human beings and not human beings made for Sabbath. Especially, this clearly indicates that religious rituals 
need to help people move closer to God than, and their fellow human beings. Any ritual should enable them to live in harmony with the others. If you have read the life of Jesus Christ, you might remember that as a result of his revolutionary stand against the political and the religious authorities, we all know that Jesus was nailed on the cross. He was killed because he was a people's person and because he preached about the reign of God, a reign or a kingdom that, that was different from the reign of the Roman and the Jewish house. He emphasized the values of this kingdom as justice, peace, and equality, just like how uh, these three important words that we have learned from the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and the fraternity. We also have that in our constitution. Dr. B.R. Ambedkar has used it in our constitution. Again, in the book of John's gospel, in chapter 14, verses 27, Jesus also says, peace I give you, not of this world, which was against the world of that time, which means this Pax Romana. The word that Pax Romana means the peace of Rome. Pax Romana was more of a peace of political control, but Jesus then promised the value of peace with justice, which means a harmonious living again, the peace with justice. Um, if you have read uh, the Bible, uh, there is a book called the Psalms in chapter 85, verse 10. Uh, we read that peace and justice will kiss each other, where also we see this harmonious justice. So wherever there is peace, there needs to be justice. Justice should break the hierarchical structure that we have practiced. No religion or religious founders have practiced hierarchy. It is, it's, I think it was inserted into the scriptures in the later days. Hierarchy can never bring harmony in our life. We are all called to live as equals with the entire creation. I was reminded of a slogan that we usually use in the villages, uh, in the Tamil villages, and even today we see, we, we, we know a very common slogan, which really means that divided, we are, when we are divided, we are easily manipulated with injustice. These are very basic lessons that we have learned from the schools. United we stand, divided we fall. Therefore, it is the superiority and the selfishness of fundamental religious ideas that lead to peacelessness. But being in communion, our harmony will only bring a peaceful life. Living in harmony does not mean one religion and one God. It is to live respecting others, respecting others' doctrines, spirituality, and standing in harmony with them to make this world as a better place. Even sometimes learning from other religions their humanitarian and egalitarian values also matters. From the Western world, India has always been seen as being cherished as the value of unity and in diversity, we need to hold on to that value. People living in harmony is not an utopian concept, a concept that can never happen. We have witnessed how humanity surfaces each time a disaster strikes us. We have witnessed it during the 2015 floods in Chennai, we have witnessed it even now in this COVID pandemic time. People have come together, immaterial of their differences, their ideologies, their practices, just to help people. They have just worked in harmony to save people's life. This is the true meaning of harmony and peace. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., I think this is what he would have said if he was here today. I, had, I have a dream when all, all children will walk holding hands forgetting their caste, their race, their religion and gender differences and live in harmonious, live harmonious life in the world and to make this reign of God as an excited reality today. To end this a small talk with a story that I read very recently from a book, wonderful book, which is called as the Prayer of the Frog, written by Father Antonio de Milo, which was such, so much lined in this thought that I would like to bring. A woman dreamt she walked into a brand new shop in the marketplace and to for her surprise found God behind the counter. She asked him, what do you sell here? And God said to her, everything your heart desires. 
hardly daring to believe what she was hearing the woman decided to ask for the best things human beings could wish for so she said i want peace of mind and love and happiness and wisdom and freedom from fear she also said after a thought she said she added just not for me but for everyone in the earth god smiled at her and said i think you have gotten me wrong my dear he said we don't sell fruits here but we only sell seeds students you are the future and you and the future belongs to you stand together work together and we will make this world a better place god bless you all thank you so much thank you father for sharing your views on peace from the biblical perspective now it's time to hear the views of mr jaswinder singh very good morning to all of you um, honorable chancellor dr es ganeshan and uh, honorable madam chancellor dr anuradha ganeshan and all other dignitaries from different faiths and my dear friends it's been a pleasure being here and i could really recognize few faces the last time we were there uh, in physical but yeah thanks to covid <laughs> but <laughs> we're still able to connect today so it's been an amazing amazing experience listening to all of you it and and always it is a very insightful and learning experience when we come to into faiths like this so i mean if we really talk about the current scenario the current time that is going through in and around where there are conflicts uh, religious conflicts social conflicts political conflicts and everything in the world looks like burning people are burning from inside people are burning from outside the societies are burning the countries are burning at the end of the day everyone would need something to feel to really pause for a second and to introspect that what kind of society really we built is this a society where i'm happy with the person but when i come to know about the religion of that person probably i won't be that happy so this intolerance so let me just dig down a little to the really definition of the word religion in sikhism gunanak dev ji who's the founder of sikhism says tol dharm daya ka poot so compassion is the mother of religion so if you are not compassionate enough then you're not a dharmi you're not a religious person so gunanak dev ji traveled across the world and when people asked him that why are you traveling around the world what are you really searching for gunanak dev ji replied that i'm searching for people who are waiting to be connected with the one so he gave this message of people message to the people of ik oankar so what does it mean it means the one who created is going to nurture us and at the end is going to destroy and he is the one there are people would say you know around the world somebody who is giving us food somebody who is giving us shelter but gunanak dev ji breaks all those boundaries and say no don't get behind any person around you just look around the one who is there all the time with you helping you out with with the walks of life and your struggles of life so when we talk about the communal harmony the basic idea doesn't rely in if you have resources and you're happy to share them you should share them but the real test comes into picture when you don't have resources you don't have spaces 
you don't have structures to support but you create them you sacrifice yourself for the sake of others protecting somebody's dignity and saving people's life and helping them to prosper sacrificing yourself so the basic idea of sikhism doesn't rely in sharing if you have it's about shared and whatever is left have it so it's called vand ke shakna offering the things that you have first to the other people and then whatever is left is yours if you don't have anything left just be in the shukr be be thankful to the lord that he gave you that opportunity to be able to share to others so when we talk about sikhism the basic idea lies in compassion so let let us move a little forward with this you know i was reading a story a very beautiful story that i could really want you to know today if you are living in a society or a state or a community and if the if one community is burning and the other is enjoying the legacies let's take an example of a state which is burning with fire and on the one side there are people enjoying the luxuries and they have all the money they have all the financial uh, support and they could you know book the fire stations fire vehicles and uh, you know those vehicles immediately they came over and they you know help them out with the fire but on the other side the community which is deprived who doesn't have resources and that community cannot buy those fire uh, helping vehicles at the end of the day that fire again is going to come to those rich communities those rich societies those rich structures and going to burn them so when we talk about communal harmony we cannot succeed as one religion or one community without helping the other if you talk about the bigger picture so when we talk about sikhi when we talk about the religious freedom it's not just about accepting it is about helping it is about being with them standing with them at when they are the most vulnerable situation so as one of my friend was quoting the covid example you might have seen our sick brothers with turbans on the head when there was floods in chennai in 2015 there were there were other communities but you might you might have noticed the sick brothers without even having their own food they went out to help people when there were floods in kedarnath when there were floods in kerala when there were even though in iraq when people are dropping bombs you will see those sick brothers with the tags in the hand and say drop food not bombs so the 10th master the 10th guru guru gobind singh ji ordered us with one mission in life and that one mission is deg deg fate so what does that mean that means food for all irrespective of which ever religion are they from which ever community do they belong to they are hindu they are muslim they are from uh, tamil nadu they are from uh punjab or they they are male female irrespective of wherever they are you have to offer them food before you eat and the second is teg fate so teg is basically a sword so that symbolizes justice for all so as we celebrate the world peace day let's just go back to the times where the communities were suppressed with the ones which were there in power so there were physical violence people were forcefully converted people were held from the necks and they were asked to accept what the community in power wants them to believe in so that time the sect religion picked out the sword and said no it, we can enjoy our privileges but at the same time if our brothers from other community are deprived of those privileges we should be able to help them out and if we are not able to do it 
we'll sacrifice ourselves. And there comes the concept of shahidi, sacrificing your own self, not for yourself, not for, not for even your community, but for protecting others' dignity and others, other communities' faith and liberty. So the very beautiful idea of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, our spiritual scripture and our living Guru, Guru Granth Sahib Ji says, Avval Allah Noor Upaya, Kudrat Ke Sab Bande, Ek Noor Te Sab Jag Ujjaya Kaun Pale Ko Mande. That we are born from the same light. So whom you call that this person is bad, that that person is good. We don't have any right to say this community is better, that community is better. You know, I remember there's one story where the religious and the social uh, intellects of that time came to Gunanak Dev Ji and they asked a very beautiful question. And they asked, like, Gunanak Dev Ji, tell us who is superior. Either this religion is superior or that religion is superior. Gunanak Dev Ji said, the ones were deprived of doing good deeds are the inferior ones. Shubh Amala Bajo Donu Everyone is going to be crying at the end without good deeds in life. And one who is actually working for the betterment of society as a whole will be taken and will be blessed with love, with compassion, and with acceptance in the code of God. So, the very basic idea which Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj says, Manas ki jat, sabay ekya pachan, will recognize all human race as one. Hariknu, accept that they are the ones when, you know, the communities contribute their bits, things become more beautiful rather than one community struggling on their own. So, I'll give you a very beautiful example. Our highest holy shrine is Sri Darbar Sahib, Sri Harmandar Sahib. You might call it Golden Temple, which is there in Sri Harmandar Sahib. So the moment you enter there, there are four different doors and they're always open. Open for all communities to enter freely and enjoy the ambience. Feel that spiritual connect, irrespective of whichever faith do you follow. But you all need that food for thought, which we are really deprived from inside. So I'll again emphasize on this point that every religion talks about oneness. Every religion talks about connect. Every religion talks about love, compassion. But the problem resides in my interpretation of the religion. The problem resides in how I believe that religion how I believe that religion or how I follow that religion. The problem besides in my definition of religion, that this is what Hinduism says, probably. This is what Islam says. Or this is what Christianity says. This is what Sikhism says. But the problem, let us talk about the solution for a second. At the end of the day, we need to believe in what the founders of the faith said. What is the real definition of Hinduism? What is the real definition of Christianity and Islam? And when we really dig in, we would realize that religions are beautiful. And they will help you to find the inner peace which you're really deprived. And during this harsh COVID times, and we've been dealing with people with mental health cases, people are struggling and there are youngsters of 13, 14, 24, 25, who, who really just started with the life journey, they are struggling and they call us and say, no, I don't want to live more. I want to end up my life. So very big question for all of us present today. Are we really successful in calling ourselves the preachers of religion when our youngsters, especially our youngsters are deprived of that real essence of connect. They feel that inner void. And when they feel that void, nothing seems pleasant to them, irrespective of whatever it is. No food seems good to you when your stomach is upset. Nothing seems blissful when your mind is upset. So what we need to do as a community, 
as a as we talk about communal harmony today such initiatives like we're doing today we need to really really dig in and talk about mental health today and how religion can talk about it how religion can help us to contemplate on the thought of oneness that that helps us to build a beautiful and prosperous community together so with this i'll take a pause with my words and i really would like to congratulate all of us present today and a very 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 blissful and happy world peace day to all of you thank you thank you thanks a lot for having me here today thanks a lot thank you thank you sir for sharing what compassion is from the eyes of sikhism we would like to thank all the resource persons of, of this wonderful day teaching us the truth that peace can't be kept by force it can only be achieved by love harmony and understanding thank you all once again the most beautiful thing a woman can wear is confidence i would like to invite one such confident personality dr sp sangeeta vice principal academics to propose the vote of thanks what happened uh... so she is ma'am uh, is coming sir just uh, dr devika you can do it yourself देविका देविका हाँ हाँ सॉरी दर वाज एन एटवर्क इश्यू वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन हॉनरेबल चांसलर मैडम चांसलर principal avit beloved dean csr and all the hys of av campus respected guest speakers for today's symposium convener of this program dr devika dear colleagues and my dear students it's a great privilege for me to propose the vote of thanks during the symposium on communal harmony all great religions of the world inculcate equality and brotherhood of mankind and the virtue of tolerance India being the largest democracy in the world with a civilization of more than 5000 years old with multiple cultural origins despite multiple religious linguistic cultural regional and caste identities modern india presents a picture of unity in diversity where people of different faiths and harmony live harmoniously but recent days maintaining communal peace has become quite challenging task many attempts to cast turbulence in the communal harmony have been foiled in 2021 as we slowly heal from the covid-19 pandemic we are inspired to think creatively and collectively about how to help everyone to recover better how to build resilience and how to transform our world into one that is more equal can more justified equitable inclusive 
sustainable and healthier the road to peace and harmony can never be smooth our honorable chancellor and madam chancellor always feel that we as an higher education institution it's our responsibility to create an environment through education where everyone can live peacefully and with harmony they emphasize the need for religious harmony in the campus as quoted by our madam chancellor we at av campus celebrate all the festivals irrespective of religion language or community with zest and seal through the center for campus life my heartfelt thanks to our honorable chancellor and madam chancellor for their encouragement and support in arranging this symposium thank you so thank you ma'am my sincere gratitude to our beloved jean ma'am who is the person behind this great show every year she does this in our campus her connects with national foundation for communal harmony helps us to organize this event in association with them peace is something the world is in desperate need of being an international day of peace she thought that today is the right day to host this event thank you ma'am on behalf of av campus i express my gratitude to dr dubai ias national foundation for communal harmony by encouraging us to host this event every year under their flag my sincere thanks to all the speakers dr rajal barandia J- Jain, Mr. P. K. Abdul Rahman, Mr. Kaliyamuthi Shrita, Reverend Father Theophilus, Mr. Jashwinder Singh, and Mr. Vijay Sattwa for accepting our invitation and helping us in spreading peace and harmony. My heartfelt thanks to our principal and HOAs of Faculty of Arts and Science, Department of Management Studies, Law, Architecture, and Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Campus in Charge, Vice Principals, and all supporting hands who helped us in organizing this event. my wishes to dr devika convener of this program for successfully organizing this event all religions teach men to be good and peaceful intolerance is the religion of negative the gita the quran the bible the granth sahib contain gems of wisdom although the followers might believe their teachings the essence of true religious teaching is that one should serve and be friend to all i would end with not telling that there is no one religion for the whole humanity but there is only one humanity for all the religions when the power of love overcomes the love of power the world will know peace happy world peace day to everyone thank you thank you ma'am to conclude this wonderful event of how to live in peace harmony compassion and joy let's all conclude this with the national anthem and let's rise up for the same and see ma'am thank you all thank you very much hello ah that became yes ma'am can i am i am i audible thank you very much for everyone devika ah. yes ah. ma'am sorry ipo unde ma'am anga delhi la avaru ketru parla ah டெல்லில அப்புறம் நான் பேசுறேன் நான் பேசுறேன் நான் பேசுறேன் ப்ரோ மேம் சரி சரி we are in the zoom நான் பேசுறேன் நான் பேசுறேன் ஓகே